three, two, one, lift off. I'm Ruth, a patent holding inventor and maker. And I'm Sean, a designer and engineer. And we believe that kids have the best invention ideas. So join us on our mission to build kids' ideas, make mistakes, and show that anyone can be an inventor. Kids invent stuff. We've built and tested 99 kids' inventions here, but we've never tested one here. So we're going to send our 100th kids' invention 30 kilometres up into the stratosphere on a weather balloon. So since we started this channel, we have been sent tens of thousands of invention ideas, both physical drawings and submitted online. We love seeing your ideas so much and we're not going to stop just because we've reached 100 inventions. So what we are going to do is try and find one to send to space. So if you've ever tried to tie something to a helium balloon, you will know they cannot lift very much weight. So the biggest challenge for us in choosing an invention to send up to the stratosphere on a weather balloon is going to be the weight. And the weight we're dealing with roughly is about the size of an apple. So we need to make sure that our invention doesn't weigh more than an apple. And we've decided to build eight-year-old Aria's idea for a disco chicken. It's a robot chicken that poops confetti, has a party and has laser <laughs> eyes. So the first thing we need to do is make the body of Aria's chicken. We've got some plastic robot bits because they're super lightweight and they fit together. So we're going to have a go and see if we can make something vaguely chicken-like out of these parts. It needs a few bits adding to it, but I think this could be the base of Aria's robot chicken. We love the fact that Aria's invention has a party, it has a disco, but it also poops confetti. So the chicken is gonna poop on the earth from space. Not a phrase I thought I'd say, but we want to make sure it's a celebration. We don't want our chicken to litter, which means the confetti it fires needs to be biodegradable. First thought, we thought rose petals, natural, beautiful smell incredible. However, they are quite big. I mean, even if you look at it compared to the size of the chicken, it's big. We want to poop a lot on the earth, <laughs> so we need something smaller. Thought about one of our favourite things. These are wildflower seeds, although mainly it looks like sand, which is also one of the big ingredients of wildflower seeds. So this stuff's really fine. Not very pretty though. So I raided the kitchen cupboards and I came across some rice. I still think it's too big though. Also, it's not very pretty. We could though add some food colouring to it. We could make it look nicer. And as I started to look through my cupboards and I got the food colouring out, I realised I think I've got the perfect thing. These are sprinkles. They're already coloured like confetti. They're biodegradable. We'll fit a load of these in the chicken and they're actually really light. Just imagine that from space. We've drawn a hole on the top and we're just experimenting with putting sprinkles inside. We've got another hole in the bottom of here. When this gets pulled down, poops come out. Poop! Aria wanted her chicken to poop, but also to dance. But there is some big challenges. It's going to be as cold as being in the Arctic when this chicken is up there. And lots of motors and things don't work very well when they are cold. We were initially thinking about using some pneumatics. So this is like a tiny mini version of the way that a digger moves its bucket and its arms. The problem with this is that when we go up high above the earth, the pressure is going to drop a lot and it's going to make the pistons move on their own. Not so sure that's going to work. Now we've also got some motors, but one of the problems with this motor is that it stops at a different place every time. We don't want it to pull on this cord and then for it to stop with the chicken's pooping mechanism half open and then for all our confetti to fall out. We've got a motor here. This is a stepper motor. This is much more accurate. You can make it stop at exactly the same place every time, but we're not sure that this motor is going to be powerful enough. So we think we're going to solve this problem with one of these. It's an actuator from a car locking system. So when you remotely press your car locking system and the doors lock, it's one of these that help make it happen. These actually are designed to work when it's quite cold. OK, so we want our chicken to be able to poop and dance at the right moment. And to do that, we are going to program in some timing into our little Arduino here, our little programmable circuit board, so that it basically sleeps until it's a certain amount of time that's passed when we know we're going to be at the right height with our weather balloon. Then that will kick in and it will make our little actuator start to move to make the chicken dance. And as we're talking about programming and Arduinos, we want to say a massive thank you to the amazing folks at Arm who helped us and supported us to bring to life our 100th invention. We 
We love building things as close to the kids' invention as possible. However, on Aria's chicken, she has laser eyes, and we spoke to the space expert people and they said, no lasers. So, instead of lasers, we've gone for LEDs. So we can have all the disco colors. Now we might not have NASA's budget, but we still wanted a launch pad. So we fabricated together this beautiful launch pad for Aria's chicken. We also want to say a massive thank you to Lincoln Electric for supporting our 100th invention. We couldn't have done this without them. So we just got an email from Balloon Chris and it looks like this Saturday is not a go for the launch, which means hopefully in two weeks time, the weather will be better and we might be able to launch then. <laughs> Tracker, battery, battery. camera, multi billion dollar company arm on a sock. <laughs> Next to a robot chicken. And then Ari's family arrived to meet the chicken. Does NASA have a poop cycle test <laughs> before they launch? Official poop cycle test. Go! Nice. Lovely bit of pooping there. I like it. It's just for pooping. 10 out of 10. Now, chicken, just do that again, but 30 kilometers in the sky, okay? What could possibly go wrong? Everything. So it could go due west, but we don't want it drifting too far because then it starts to go into the mountains. Balloon Crest says it's time to launch the balloon. What's the rule of the balloon? Don't touch it. Don't lick <laughs> the balloon. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was launch time. Ten, nine, eight, eight seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, lift off. <laughs> I'm nervous for Bob the chicken. <laughs> that might be the last we ever see of him. I can't see it. It's gone. It's gone up. Time to track. <laughs> Time to track, yes. We're heading to Wales to retrieve the 100th invention. Somewhere above our heads, the robot chicken and the balloon is hopefully flying upwards and hopefully the GoPro is recording. We're here for the next 10 15 minutes and then Balloon Chris is going to send us somewhere. <laughs> if we're going to make a disco song to go with the chicken, what words should there be in the song? Bob the chicken. Yeah, because it's yep. called Bob. Going up to space. Chicken, oh. chicken, chicken. It should say chicken, chicken, chicken. Chicken, oh. chicken, chicken. chicken, chicken. chicken, chicken, chicken and while our friend made a song, it was time to find Bob. We're tracking and we're going to get ourselves slightly closer to where the balloon is going to be okay. in a minute, in theory. We're off. The tracker has stopped and we are six minutes away from going to see where it is. Hopefully no one else has found it. Hopefully it's in one piece. Like we are just rushing towards where the tracker is. Where do we think Bob is? In the, in the corn field. field. At least he won't be hungry. At least he won't be hungry because what do chickens eat? Corn. Perfect. We are walking down a track with some lovely people looking for a chicken in a field. <laughs> Why are the children running, Ruth? Because that's where the chicken is! Somewhere over in this bit here, I think. Where is the chicken in the massive field? Oh! Oh my god, Sam! Mom! Have you got him? Yay! He's still alive! Yeah, he's still alive and there's still some confetti in it. 
He's lost his tail. Oh dear. That's it. You've designed something that's gone to space. Yes, How cool is that? He still poops and he's gone to space. He went all the way to space to go to the toilet and he still needs to go. He looks quite happy really. He looks very pleased with himself, doesn't he? We're going to go back so we can put the, watch the footage. Sean, what just happened? A D card got stuck in the camera. I'm going to extract it with a pair of pliers like killing the tooth. Precious cargo. Yeah, I'm very nervous. <laughs> let me see, let me see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. And with our bit of the story told, this is what happened to Bob the chicken. Three, two, one, lift off. Question is, did he poo? Did he poo? You can poo. Oh, go, 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 What goes up must come down. Bob the chicken. Aria's robot chicken Bob successfully went to space and survived. And we built our one hundredth invention. Woo See you next time. Aww. It's a good job you didn't lick that balloon really, isn't it? <laughs>